Disclaimer, this video contains a lot of squinting and some lopsided tanning. Hope it doesn't bug you too much. friends and welcome back to another video. So I'm out on my morning walk and it is so beautiful this morning. I am squinting a little, of course I've put my sunglasses up so as I'm not being rude um, at the camera, but I just wanted to sit down and have a little chat really. I'd had my morning coffee come out from my um, refreshing walk and got all invigorated of um, I wanted to sit down and talk to you for a change. So um, I've made a little note, um, I've got my iPad here with me with a few notes that I want to explain to you, you've probably seen the title already, is um, just a few um, tips really on how to become a TV extra. Of course I have explained previously that's what I do until you know inevitable stardom takes off and I become an actress. Um, everybody's dream, I know. But um, in the meantime, for 20 years, I've always done it on, in the background of my other careers and I've had a fantastic time doing it. So I'd just like to um, sit down and talk to you and give you a few tips on how you can become a blur in the background of your favorite TV shows. So in no means am I saying that you can make a living from this. Um, you're not going to pay your mortgage, your car and all your other direct debits and bills that you have to pay f just from being a TV extra, but you can certainly make um, a substantial amount of um, pocket change, shall we say, to uh, buy your favourite accessories or perhaps fund a holiday, whatever you want to do with your, your extra income. So here goes. So the list I have probably isn't fully comprehensive. Um, you yourself might be a TV extra and want to give me a few tips and tricks, but I just want to give you a few um, starter points so you can get underway on making that extra bit of cash, have fun, make friends, and possibly see yourself in the back of a TV show or film. So my list may not be in the exact order that you want to be thinking about these things, but I've kind of put them in the order of how I thought about becoming a TV extra. So first of all, be happy enough to take pictures the way you look now. Now, if you've watched any of my videos, you know very well that I am not happy with the way that I look. However, I have to be comfortable enough to get in front of the camera and have at least a headshot and a full body shot. Um, and for various productions, they might need sort of like the back of your head or a profile shot. So you do need to have the basic photos to start off with. Some agencies are nice enough to accept um, a selfie, um, but the, the more agencies that you want to get with, I'll come to that bit in a little while, um, you are going to need some professional photographs. Now, I'm filming on the iPhone now. I do have a fantastic Canon M50 as well. Um, they are fantastic um, shots for a lot of agencies, but you will get some agencies that say, uh -uh, they definitely want that professional shot. So as you're starting out and you're not sure where your career is going to take you, you may not want to spend the most on these pictures right from the beginning. So just some basic head and shoulder shots um, and then a full body shot perhaps just the two prints um, just as cheap as you like to get a good quality picture to get you off into the game okay the reason I'm saying this as well financially is you have to be prepared to get updated photographs. So um, say you change your look, like I used to be a brunette and now I'm blonde, so I have to update my pictures. When I got my eyebrows redone, I have to update my pictures. I gain weight, <laughs> I lose weight, you have to get your pictures redone. So it's, um, unless you are static in the way you look, which fantastic, good for you if, if you are, I just can't seem to have a handle on that, um, you will be um, forking out again for some additional pictures. It doesn't have to be every year, just um, whenever you change a significant amount. Also, on the photos front, you might want to think about getting some um, different kinds of photographs. So what's always um, works well with agencies is they like you in, say, different uniforms. So if by any chance you have any uniforms, um, like a nurses or a fireman, policeman, ambulance, um, office style, um, just all different kinds of looks that you could be portrayed in, this always works well in a picture because if they're looking through um, the production company or you know the, the casting director is looking through a book of different faces if they see some if they're looking for a police person they see somebody in a police uniform that fits their bill they're probably more likely to use that one because they want the easiest fix for them so 
uniforms always a bonus also just to think outside the box a little bit so maybe um say obviously i have blonde hair now but I, if i was to get pictures of me as a goth or a hippie that's not my usual style of picture so it might be something um versatile that casting directors would be able to look at so it's always nice to think outside the box and get something a little different in your photos as well so get a little portfolio going for yourself even perhaps before you get an agent um just to to see yourself in these different styles because uh, that's how you're going to want to be um getting cast more frequently as different um styles excuse the traffic there so um next up is to get a DBS certificate. Now, this is a disclosure and barring services um, check. So it's just gonna check that you aren't a criminal. Hopefully you're not a criminal. <laughs> um, so it's gonna do like the basic of all checks. Thanks for that. So uh, this is gonna do like the basic checks. There are um, more expensive checks that you can get done, but you just, um, I think it's about 25 pound in the UK at the moment to just get the basic DBS certificate. And that will cover you for I don't even think it's 12 months, I think it's 18 months at the moment um, to make sure that you can work on set. This is pretty much an industry standard now. Most agencies will ask if you have one or request that you get one because most production companies are asking for people to have them now. It means things like you can work on set with children. You won't always be working with children, thank goodness. <laughs> No, I'm kidding. Um, you won't always be working with children, but they do always ask that you have one nowadays. So that is always a good thing to have in advance because you can be like, hey, yeah, I have my photos and a DBS certificate. Sign me up. So next up then, your measurements. As I said, this is the bane of my life. I hate my measurements, um, <laughs> but they are mine. So I have to own them. So you're gonna want to grab a tape measure and measure every inch of yourself, everything right down to your inside leg and your hat size. They're gonna to wanna to know everything. So um, if you already have this information, it just speeds up any process or any forms that you have to fill in just to be able to go ahead and say, yes, I already have all my measurements. Let's get filming. So measurements is another thing that I would uh, suggest that you, you get started on. <laughs> okay. Um, start collecting clothes. Now for a shopaholic like me, this doesn't seem like a bad thing to do, but um, I mean, in regards to filming, what they normally want is anything that's got no logos. So you could be filming various different decades. So anything probably from say the 60s to now, if you've got a few items that you think that could um, well represent that decade and it has no logos and not too um, busy a pattern on it then you're probably going to be snapped up straight away because um, there's a lot of filming that goes on throughout different decades and if you've already um, got costume so you can say yes I already have my own thing so they don't even have to worry about the costume department finding anything for you you're probably going to get more work even for nowadays clothing um, I still see a lot of people that turn up on set with them um, branded shoes and branded bags even logos on their tops and it's it's pretty much a no-no. You want to get as many clothes as possible that are not too dark, like not always black like this, um, but not too bright either. Just literally something that you're going to blend into the background with no logos, but you could probably spot yourself if somebody you know is watching the TV. <laughs> Okay, what do we have next? Consider how you're gonna get to the location. Now, it would be lovely if you live in a town where a lot of filming happens and you'll always be like, yeah, I'm five minutes away, I can get a lift. But it doesn't happen like that. Um, when I first started uh, 20 years ago, um, I was driving, but um, most of the things that I did were down in London, which is um, three and a half, four hours away from me. So, I was getting a lot of trains. I drove a lot. Um, there hadn't used to be um, quite the same issues with uh, paying to drive around London. So I had used to drive and find parking, especially if there was parking already on location, which is fantastic, but that's not always a, a given either. So just find out how um, you'd like to get to location. If you drive, if you're comfortable driving up and down the country to locations at various times a day, fantastic. That's what I do um, and I love it. I love going off on my little mini adventures, have my coffee or my water in the car, um, maybe some car snacks and just go and enjoy life. But I know some people still um, use public transportation to get to set and it's not always um, viable. Uh, quite recently, um, I did uh, some night shoots. They were 15 hours long. 
they were um, down south so it was already a few hours away from me to start off with um, sometimes we'd start at say 12 or 1 o'clock in the afternoon which is fantastic but then when you're finishing at say 3 or 4 in the morning how are you going to get home? There's probably not going to be anywhere close by to where you are if you're in a, some random field where you're set up and then you have to get back to a, a train station and wait for hours. It's just not safe or practical. Um, so if, if it is that you're using public transport, I would say um, choose your jobs carefully. <laughs> you know, ask for the locations before you accept them. Other than that, uh, if you car share, pass, possibly. I, I've done that a few times. I've taken people, I've given people lifts back. Um, but you want to really be um, figuring those kind of things out for yourself beforehand because you don't want to be reliant on somebody else. Okay, the sun is actually getting brighter on one side now, so I'm definitely squinting more and more. Sorry about that. I'm sorry if this is a really frustrating lighting, but it's just so beautiful. I wanted to just sit down and, and chat. Uh, please forgive me. Um, okay, next up, finding an agent. Um, back when I started, there used to be, and I believe there still is, a book called Contacts. It comes out every year, so it'll be this year, Contacts uh, 2019 and it would have everything in there. It would have photographers, agents, accommodation, um, just, you know, if, you're, if you needed lighting or if you're a professional on the other side of the camera, like a bit of everything, just contacts basically that would uh, get you up and running. Nowadays, of course, the internet is a fantastic thing and you can just pop it into Google, pop a little search in for agencies near me or if you think of your local um, city. So, I, I mean, I would go like Manchester, Birmingham, Nottingham, Derby, London, London is a little far for me. I'm perfectly happy to, to travel that far, but sometimes agencies won't take you if you're a certain mile radius away. So that's something else to consider, but just pop it into Google and find out what you um, what's comfortably near you, because some agencies will require a meetup first of all. So not all of them, but some want to do their own measurements and take their own just little quick snap of you just to say that you haven't, you know, um, catfished and put somebody else's picture on i mean who would want to put a picture of this on <laughs> good luck if you want to try and get work looking like me but anyway um yeah so some agencies will want to meet up with you um so that's that's an expense that you have to pay out of your own pocket um, i went to to meet an agency in cardiff of course i had to make my own way there pay for fuel and parking um spent a couple of hours there they did all the measurements and pictures and then I have had work <laughs> so I've had a lot of work from them so it was worthwhile but of course financially up front that's just an extra cost that you may have to consider especially when it comes to joining multiple agents which I will touch on now so a lot of agents will stipulate that you can only be with one agency which is fine fantastic if they don't charge to join they have a low commission and they get you lots of work those are your three main factors. If you find an agent that has all of those factors, fantastic, you are onto a winner. Um, and also, could you just like comment down below and let me know who that is because I could do with an agency like that. No, um, in all seriousness, um, there are agencies out there that will not charge you for joining them, but they will add charges on and say, well, this is for the web fee, this is for a book fee, um, this is an annual fee, this is a um, biannual fee. Is that the right way of saying it? Every two years. <laughs> um, but those charges are sneaky and not always necessary because there are some fantastic agencies out there that don't take any money up front, don't take any money um, for book fees out of even your first um, job, which is what, another way some people do it. Um, and they have low commission rates and get you work. So that is another way of going, you're onto a winner, you have a great agency, of which I do have one. Um, <laughs> so yeah, the other way of doing it then is, um, as I just touched on there, sometimes they won't take any money up front and of course you don't want to be paying up front because that, that's bad, unless they're saying it's for photos, but if you have your own, then try and use your own because obviously you want to save that every bit of pennies wherever you can. But some agencies will just take a small amount and sometimes, like honestly, it's probably about £39 for the year, which is a great price. Um, and they take that out of your first job. So if your first job is double that, take your fuel out of things, you've still made 
a few pence, <laughs> but you've you know then paid up for the year and hopefully you'll get a lot of work as well. There's a couple of ways around that, either you know paying up front if you really want to do that, that's your prerogative. I'm just saying you don't have to. Um, paying from your first job or sometimes not having to pay an annual fee at all, which winner. Um, okay, so the more agencies you have, stands to reason, the more work you're probably going to get. So I say that as um, I in the past have had many, many agents and still done no work, but you kind of have to do the legwork yourself as well. So um, when I first started, um, I just had one agent. I was regular on quite a few uh, well-known TV shows. So I was working every three weeks for each TV show with other bits in between and I was making coin. I, I really don't like that phrase. I was making good money. <laughs> don't know why I said that. So I was um, doing well, shall I say, for myself and I was pretty, you know, proud of that. Um, through college and university um, and then through my first jobs after that. Oh, I've been working since before college and university but you know. Um, yeah, I was always making a substantial amount of money from my side hustle as it were. Um, nowadays, with the internet, obviously it's a fantastic thing but they kind of make you work as well. So a lot of agents work through apps or WhatsApp or Facebook, um, closed groups. So you constantly have to check what they're posting to make sure if you fit the bill because you wanna be the first in that queue. If they've got a thousand people on their books and you don't see it till three hours later, you've missed it. Very rarely nowadays are they actually gonna call you up as they did in the old days and say, hey, um, it says you're free on this date. Is that so correct? Because you're booked that doesn't really happen. Yeah, so um, there's many ways that they book you now. So um, normally you'll get an availability check, even if you've already put that you're available on your profile, um, they'll just double check. Then a light pencil, a heavy pencil, you're booked. And then even then sometimes work can get canceled. So it's not always a given. I wouldn't be thinking of, um, you know, paying your rent or <laughs> your mortgage out of these fees because you never know if the work is actually gonna be there. So that kind of moves on to payment. I can't tell you how much you get paid for being a TV extra because it varies so much um, through your agencies, fees, um, production companies, different networks, they're all different. So um, you'll get to learn as you go on the ones that you wanna be doing more frequently because you end up with a better um, figure in your um, pocket at the end of it. But to start off with, you just want to um, take anything that's out there. I I think the, the most information you can learn is from being on set. So from being on set, you're gonna make friends, hopefully. <laughs> if you're a talker like me, you're gonna probably make friends. So you're gonna meet people that know something different than you do, and then eventually you'll know something different than the next person. And it's kind of a lovely network of people. So, um, you'll find different agencies that are, you, you you'll learn about agents you'll learn which ones are the good ones which ones are the bad ones which ones are a bit ropey but they're worth the risk it's a networking system so you you kind of <laughs> yeah you go on set to perhaps be in a tv show maybe even be seen earn a bit of money but what you're actually doing is networking that is the biggest part of this you are networking because the um the wider you cast your net the more um work that you're probably going to get that's giving you financial gain so um being on set is the the best part of all of it so not only yes you may spot a celebrity i don't know who anybody is because i don't watch the television but um, <laughs> um you, you may make some lifelong friends you may make some acquaintances you may see somebody that you see pops up on another set and you think oh hey it's nice because i see a familiar face but what you're gonna definitely be doing is learning your skill your craft about what goes on set. So this is all before you've even um, stepped onto a set and figured out what it is to stand on your mark or check in the gate or where's the nearest grip, we need somebody to do something. Those are all terms that you're not really gonna have to think about. All you wanna think about is how do I get to location? Um, is there free parking? <laughs> where's the coffee? <laughs> no, um, how do I get to location? Um, is there free parking? hopefully everyone's going to be lovely and pleasant for the day and 
what time do I finish? No, um, how much are you going to get paid at the end of it? I, I don't know. There's so many things that, um, so many variables that go into it. I just, I want to try and give you a few basic pointers that get you up and running and off having a great time. I have had 20 years of varying careers, but all the way through that, I've always been able to go back to, um, life in the background and um, being that blur you know some days you might even do a 12 hour day on set which you think fantastic it was a lovely drive here I met some great people I got paid for it and you might not even get used so if you're looking to do this job to see yourself on TV it's probably not going to happen if you're looking to do this job to perhaps further your career learn a new skill make some friends earn some money it's the right place to be so, like I said, especially if you're a talker, because you're going to spend a lot of hours on set or in a green room or a holding area, just making friends and chatting away. So uh, just briefly then to recap, before that sun blinds me and you get so annoyed of me squinting with one eye, <laughs> I'm going to just let you know. So um, first of all, pictures. Uh, a few selfies, sure. Um, if you get somebody else to take a picture of you or they've got a good camera or a good camera phone it might work some agencies do accept this but do be prepared to get a variety of different looks and of course that first professional um headshot and full body those are things that are going to be taking you up a notch to start off with get that dbs certificate that is important a lot of companies nowadays won't even um, put you forward for a job or if you do get put forward for a job they're going to be hella annoyed if you don't have that DBS certificate. So do get apply for that online. It's very quick and simple and then it comes through the post. So get that one done. Uh, tape measure, get your measurements, get everything sorted. Um, they don't all ask for your inside leg to head side, head, bleep, inside leg to hat size, but if you have every measurement going, at least you're ahead of the game. Next up, oh, uh, I actually forgot. Another tip I'd like to give you is figure out a list of skills you have, any special skills as we call them in the biz. So um, anything from bartending to um, waiting on to fire eating or stilt walking, juggling, martial arts, um, all of these things are classed as special skills. And if you get booked to use one of these skills, you're gonna get paid for it so it's always good to have a list so a few months back I was lucky enough to get booked not only to be a supporting artist but also to use my car which you get paid for and also to use my special skill as a driver so I was driving my own car fantastic so um, it's just an extra way of getting more money for your day out um, your you're a fun adventure basically so um, those special skills if you have a list of special skills or things that you can do fantastic you're already ahead of me <laughs> um, but if you don't have a comprehensive list but there's something that you've always wanted to do like um, learn karate or um, speak French perhaps start now like if you spend a little bit of time getting to grips with a new skill or a new language perhaps it's even just learning another accent or an accent that's not your own accent these are all go down as extra um, abilities that are going to enhance your workability so you're going to get um, not only paid more but booked more so in turn paid even more <laughs> and it's just always good to have these extra skills plus you might get a new hobby out of it um, it's always just nice to, to have that extra uh, versatility. So I would definitely start thinking. Um, so finally then, not all agents do what they say they're gonna do. So um, they may say, yeah, join with us. You can only be with us, but we're gonna get you work every week. It's gonna be fantastic. You're gonna get this much. We're gonna pay you straight away. It's probably a lie. Uh, there's a lot of people that want you to pay up front or um, pay for things that you don't really need to be paying for and then you're probably never going to hear from them again or very rarely and we definitely don't want that as a community of supporting artists or background artists tv extras we're generally a nice bunch and we do support each other so 
if you know of an agency um, that does this kind of thing, somebody will normally say, you know, it's probably best not to go with them, or I know someone that's been with them, it's not what they say, said on the tin. Um, quite often, um, agents just want your money. <laughs> they want you to sign up for a fee, and then they never want to speak to you again. Then 12 months down the line, they've got you maybe one or two jobs you have to pay again. This is not good because you could have been working for 10 other agencies and got one job a month and at least still been earning. So any agency that first of all tells you that you're gonna get weekly work or you're always gonna be getting paid, it's probably a scam. Um, because even in most regular TV shows, even if you are a regular as I was um, for, for years, way back when, on a couple of um, big steps here in the UK, I was a regular on Coronation Street and Hollyoaks for three and a half years. So I was working every three to four weeks on, on each of those shows as well as other things in between. And even then, as a regular, you can still only pop up that often in the background. So if someone says they're gonna get you work more frequently than that, it's not really a thing. So I would be very skeptical of how it is that they're getting you on there. Um, also, on that note, I forgot to mention about getting paid. <laughs> That's the, shall we say, tricky part. Um, most agencies will say between 30 and 60 days, you will get your money. So unless you've got um, a plethora of agents and you're always working and you know money's always coming in, um, you're probably not gonna have a steady um, income, at, at least not at the start until you've got yourself well established. So have a secondary job or a first job and this be your secondary job but what I'm saying is a lot of agencies do say you know 30 to 60 days and even then it doesn't always happen I'm actually waiting for money from April right now and it's the end of August so don't get me wrong some agents are fantastic and you'll get your money in less than three weeks it, it does vary on production companies perhaps they're still chasing but you don't want to be the one that's left out of pocket if um, you have got bills to pay you've got a life to live they're gonna be taking their cut so they should be working for you to at least chasing that production company and making sure that money is on its way to you um, I'm sure that I've not covered everything and I would really like to hear your thoughts on what I'm out of the loop on. Um, like I say, it's been a long time uh, since I first started this, but I've recently in the past ooh, 10 months got back into it a bit more heavily. So I'm still finding my feet on how things work nowadays. So I would love any um, tips and tricks from you if you're um, an extra or an actor and you wanna you know, give me a leg up and figure out how I could be upping my game. I'd be very um, appreciative of how to do that. Um, for now, I think I've got sunburn on one side of my face. <laughs> I do have sunscreen on, but wow, that is beautiful. I think I should have just done it eyes closed looking away <laughs> because that would have evened out my tan. Um, but yeah, thanks for watching. I hope that helped. Please let me know in the comments below what I can be doing, what you're doing. Um, if you're from a different country, is it different there? anything that can help as a community for other viewers that might be looking in the comments down below. Um, I mean, if you're from another country and you do this kind of work, tell me if it's different there. I mean, my dream is to um, be in America and uh, be an extra there. Of course, a location um, does change how much you could be earning and how viable you are, because where I live, there's not too many things going on up here, so I do have to travel a bit, but there's certain locations that you could be in that would be uh, more profitable. But it's not always about the profit. I enjoy the process. I love being on set. I love making friends, um, seeing how it all works from the cameras to the, the lens change to checking the gate and video village. And it's just an experience. I love it. I want to live it and I want to help you live it too. So I do hope that you have enjoyed the video and let's see, comment down below with um, how we can all be making life in the background well there you have it my uh, first set or 
only set maybe of tips and tricks of how to become a blur in the background that is a, a TV extra or supporting artist um, I hope you enjoyed the video please give it a little thumbs up and uh, hit the subscribe and even the bell if you fancy seeing more from me um, and who knows before you know it you could be sat in your car for 15 hours a day off on an adventure no really it's a fantastic lifestyle and i hope you enjoy it should you choose to accept the challenge let me know in the comments below if you uh, got yourself an agent or if i missed something out i'll see you soon thanks for watching